We all know about bees and the bees need forage and flowers and plants to feed on. But one thing we forget about bees is that they need a place to live. And ever since bees have been around, they've, they've had a relationship with trees. And trees are special as they offer shelter from the elements and also protection for the bee from predators. So a few years ago, I followed a, a swarm into a tree and it made me realize that bees weren't designed to live in square boxes on the cold ground living in like filing cabinet frames. So I made a log, put it up in a tree, and within two weeks, it, um, bees found it and moved in. I made another one, and the same thing happened. This is a hollow log that I made, and it replicates the habitat of a bee in the, in the wild. And the idea of the courses I'm running is people can make these, put them up in a tree, and bees will find them by themselves. Well, we just thought I'd take you up and show you two things. First, a wild hive, a colony in a tree, and then also one of the first log hives that I, I made about three or four years ago. And that's up in an oak tree. And it's got a really nice colony of bees in there. So hopefully, even though it's early evening now, they'll still be flying and we'll, you'll see why I want to get more of them up there. Uh, so luckily I've got a farmer who is, is quite happy for me to put um, as many hives or logs up in trees as I want. And it's got a big farm so I'm able to spread them out quite extensively which is what bees would do naturally in the, in the wild. And that research has shown that really it's about, instead of being in you know, groups of 20 or so, or so on the ground in an apiary style, they, they like to be about half a mile apart and that's much better obviously to um, keep them healthy and so after a while we'll generally get a good strong population of survivor bees. So this is the first log that I made and put up in a tree. I did it about three years ago and within two weeks of putting it up the bees moved in and they've been there ever since and I thought I wanted to show the people doing the log hive making this is the inspiration and hopefully they'll be inspired put their logs up in trees and with luck later on this year they'll get bees coming and finding them. Not far off that way. Yeah, it's just a question of balancing it out. I mean you could make make this a little bit smaller this end, it doesn't really matter. So does that not matter when you're No because the trees whatever you think if you think as a cylinder, when you the grain isn't growing like dead straight. So you you'll always be going against it. Making log hives it isn't as simple as you'd think. We, what we do is we, um, we cut out the core with a chainsaw and then use gouges like this to hollow the rest out. And the reason why I want to do courses is that not everyone has access to the tools, or especially these gouges. So by coming together for a weekend, everyone can go away with a log hive complete and set them up in a tree. What we're trying to do is get out four cores that come out like good oblongs, but these ones, the chainsaw isn't quite in line, so they've come out like rotten teeth. But I think what you can do now is just work with a gouge and just... So my name's uh, Rupert Kelton. I, uh, farm uh, in, in North Hampshire, completely conventional uh, farming, um, but just conscious of the loss of biodiversity and you know, just keen to do what we can within the bounds of farming in a profitable way, um, but doing what we can for, for wildlife as, as well. And it sort of seemed to make sense that um, what you guys are doing at the Natural Beekeeping Trust to try and sort of link that up with what we're doing as, as farmers and trying to encourage uh, wildlife and biodiversity. Um, and so, uh, yeah, come to find out more how to, to make a hive and, and hopefully get a couple put up in, in some trees. I'm not a beekeeper um, and I don't have a sort of uh, an experience of, of conventional beekeeping. Um, I'm not looking at it from the point of view of, of keeping bees and taking honey, more of, uh, from the point of view of, of helping to build uh, resilient sort of wild colonies of, of bees um, to you know, do our bit uh, in the face of colony collapse disorder and the sort of troubles that, that you hear that, that bees have been having. 
been fantastic. Yeah, super day. Yeah, it's been great to do log hive, learn about tree beekeeping and looking after bees and doing the actual physical work. Tiring but fun and good. I work as a head gardener and um, so I'm going to put it up in a hotel in one of the big oak trees. And Matt is great. Yeah, good verbal, brilliant beekeeper. Great stuff. Yeah, I enjoy talking to him. He knows his stuff. Very happy. So my name's Sean Sheriston. Um, I saw something that Matt did on YouTube um, and I thought it was really cool. I work in ecology conservation. Um, I specialise in bats so I do a lot of bat work. Um, and I know that kind of bees are in decline and that they need as much help as they can get. And it seems like a really cool new idea. And it was something interesting and kind of fits in with my skill set because I use chainsaws and climbing and things like that at work. Yeah, it's been really, really good. Yeah, it's been really interesting to go and see the um, wild colonies um, and to learn about how fussy bees can be about the dimensions of the hives, marking out the logs and the most efficient way to do all of that to make more um, log hives. Because the best thing about this is that we can all now take the information that we've got and go and make um, our own hives um, with logs that we can source at home. Where am I going to put my log? Uh, so I've got a, an allotment plot which I might put it on and I work with the National Trust for work quite a lot so there's um, some areas in the woodland that it might be suitable near the woodland edge so I may end up putting one of, one of them up in there. John there and you're cutting up a spiral so you're going like that yeah. and you'll keep that ray just going, going round. Uh, my name's Steve, I'm from Bristol. I'm a designer but I've been keeping bees for about five years and I started out doing it as a conventional beekeeper and did some courses. So natural beekeeping seems to make a lot of sense to me. So um, I want to do more of that. I just want to keep some bees and hopefully educate people about them and I'd like to get more bees in the city and have people understand them better. Um, yeah, I've had a really good day today. I'm pretty sore in the arms, but, um, but it's been loads of fun and getting to learn some new techniques is great. And it um, looks like the log hive's about halfway done. So I'm looking forward to finishing that tomorrow. Yeah, so it, it makes sense for, for farmers to, to be looking after bees. They do a job um, not just for farmers, but for everyone in, in helping produce our food. So bees' natural habitat is to be in a tree, up off the ground in a warm place where they can build without interference from humans. I saw this happen and made a few logs and bees found them almost immediately. And now I want to run courses where people could come make a log in a day or two days and take them back to different parts of the country and so we can start spreading out more habitats.